Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Huh? 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 Salvin. Salvin Reynoso. Big deal. Best producer I ever had. Big deal. Big deal? Producers don't get any credit. It's all the talent. Talent, talent, talent. Uh, Let me see here. I just want to move something here. So that I'm, I'm, there we go. I see everybody will say, why did that just move? But what I do is I like to put the, uh, uh, the interview when I'm doing these interviews over in a certain place on the screen, so when I'm looking at it, it looks like I'm looking at you. If I oh. had it on the other side, and I forgot to move it, and that's why everybody saw stuff move and so Do you want on. me to sit like this? Yeah, well. Or like this? <laughs> what would be better? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. So how you doing? I'm doing well. You've been living, in, living the big life in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Retired. Re- Retired. How old are you now? 58. And you're retired? I've been for eight years. You know what's funny about it today? I mean, we don't think of retirement being that early. Okay? But today it is. Oh, hey, there's Uh-oh. the wife. There's my wife. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just that people are being forced to retire earlier than they have in the past. For older people, yes, we're we're kind of forced out of out of jobs because they want the younger people to take those jobs for less money and no benefits. Exactly. And they will be working a lot longer because they have nothing that they've saved because they're not going to make as much and they're not going to get the benefits. And it's going to be it's going to be tragic for the young generations. Yeah, it is. Whatever millennials or Z or X, I don't know what they are. But. But. I mean, do you feel that your age uh, is going against you? I mean, in other words, if you go for a job and they find out you're, what, 58, that they, that uh, that affects them? And, oh, and that isn't that old. So, no, it's not that old. But still, they, they know that people that are in that age range are looking for a job that's going to uh, pay substantial money mm-hmm. and get benefits. And... A lot of jobs don't do that anymore. A lot of big companies don't do that anymore. And so. and and they they figure that younger that older people want a substantial amount of money. Well, yeah, because we've been used to it. We've been used to uh, being taken care of by the companies we worked up for 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 many years. Yeah. And um, and that's changed drastically. And and not only the money, but the benefits. The benefits are very important. Why do we keep talking? Why have we talked about health care for, for 30 years in this country and nothing's been done? Because we don't get proper health care. The only way to get health care is to get health care through your company in many cases. And that's just not happening anymore. Or, or to get health care uh, by being so poor that well, that's the- you can do, take a dole from the state and then you're getting the worst health care possible. And, that, and well, uh, but at least you're getting health care. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's nothing wrong with 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 government health care. At least you're getting health care. So you have to wait to see a doctor. Heck, you got to wait for for a doctor now if if you have good health care. So what's the difference? Well, I often yeah. wonder what what companies why they felt oh well we want to we want to resist the, enough health care for our people and so on. Do you, I mean, do you remember in the old days when you got health care at a company that was one of the perks they offered you, saying that's why you should come to work for us. You get health care. And, no, and no, I was never told that. I was just told, "Hey, we're going to give you health care and a four hundred one k." And it wasn't a perk; it was something you got. Yeah. And by the way, if you remember care- closely, you never had to pay for that. They paid for it. I, well, I, in 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 many cases, they paid a good deal of it, but we, you had to yeah. pay something. Well, no. In um, when I started, oh out, yes. Back in yes. the Revolutionary War. Right. Yes, uh, you're right about that. Uh, no, in, in, back in those days, they just gave you the health care. That was it. 
But you know why? Of course, I didn't didn't need it back then. Right. But you didn't have to they didn't have to jump through hoops with the insurance companies and the government regulation and and the the doctor's insurance and all this stuff. Now they got to pay up the yin yang to uh, to 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 get health care for their for their uh, employees. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it but it, but it, 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 for instance, you and I, we had a health care plan at uh, Sirius. How right. much did you pay every, every month for that? Somewhere yes. around 300 bucks, right? Right. What was that? <laughs> you know, I mean, th- that should be something that they give you and that's it. Some companies do still to this day. They pay the whole thing. Yeah. But, but it's rare. But, very but it's rare. rare. But it's very rare. And and so we wonder why we have such an unhealthy country. We have a we want you know we didn't. If any country should have been able to handle the COVID crisis, it should have been us, and we handled it miserably, just miserably. Well, there are reasons for that. Well, <laughs> yes, I hear a cat. By the way, reason, yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my buddy Bean, who's yeah. been with me for eighteen years. Just before I met you. Yeah, I got him, and he's uh, he's on his on his on his uh, last legs now. He's and he, you know, he's doing a thing where he hides mm-hmm. because he's he's literally he's dying in front of us. But wow. he's still walking around and eating. But he makes noise now. So. That's no fun. Yeah, but he still purrs, so I know he's happy. Yeah, yeah, as long as he's happy. Yeah. I, I I had a guy once I knew. His name was uh, Ken Minyard. He wound up working in L.A. We were working in Minneapolis together, and he and his wife invited me over to dinner, and we, and my wife and I, over to dinner, and we went over to dinner at their house. And as I'm sitting there eating dinner, I look down at the floor, and there is this—I don't know what it was. It it looked like it could have been a dog, but it was like bumping into things and going, <laughs> making funny sounds and so on. And I said, "What's that?" And he said, "Oh, that's our that's our dog. I can't remember what the dog's name was." Uh-huh. And I said, well, "What what's wrong with him?" He says, "Well, first he uh, got bad breath, and then we had to remove all his teeth." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that with my cat. And and then he he went uh, lame in one paw, mm-hmm. and then he went lame in the other paw, and then. Uh, we had to, uh, uh, what was it? What else? What, oh, then he went blind. Oh, mine's deaf now. Yeah. And he said he can't, couldn't, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't exactly bark. <laughs> so that's why you hear that snarf, snarf. Yeah. I said, why didn't you put him away? No. And he looked at me and went, he's, ha- he's happy. Yeah. Nothing wrong with him? He <laughs> doesn't know at, that he's feeling I'm bad. Look at this dog. It's barely an animal anymore. Yeah. You know? So, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I just feel that, that we have been so, I mean, remiss in just everything. I mean, do you realize 525 thousand people have died as a result of this country not giving a shit? And I don't care. We can blame it on Trump. Go ahead. But still, it was the, it was the, the, the um, country not giving a shit. Well, I think that's a broad statement, and and it's it's somewhat unfair to say the country doesn't give a shit because uh, look at the people who are working tirelessly in the hospitals. Yeah, they give a shit. Yeah, look at the people. I have I have a, a, a wife and a son here who work in uh, supermarkets, and they both are there every day, mm-hmm. regardless of people not wearing their masks or wearing their masks or do you know doing whatever kind of. Uh, unsafe practices so they give it they give a shit because they're going in there to help Mm -hmm. people get Mm -hmm. their groceries which is something you need um but i but i would for the most part say you're right if you say the the federal government does not give a shit and in many cases the state governments don't give a shit specifically this state that i live in yeah yeah well i mean it 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 uh uh i just feel that we let this whole thing down we didn't have to have that many people die we didn't have to have the problem that we had but we just never listened to the science, you know, or a particular right. person didn't listen to the science and completely denied that the problem existed at all, you know. And what are you going to do? I mean, it, 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 it doesn't exist at all. People are dying like crazy and it doesn't exist at all. I mean, what kind of country are we? Well, we're going to do what we did. We had an election 
And we said, this guy is not effective for what, what we need done mm. in, in this time. Yeah. Uh, in the, the, uh, the time of a pandemic, the likes of which nobody in this lifetime has seen. And uh, we said, that's enough. By a, by a you but, know, not a huge but, margin. But, but, but you go down to Texas and you got a governor down there who's opened everything up. No, and then no mask mandate, you know, the whole thing. And you go, what's this guy thinking? What's what's going through his mind? It doesn't exist. Are you kidding me? You know, that's, I, that's what I said. It's not it's not the country doesn't give a shit. It's the government doesn't give a shit. The federal government or didn't give a shit. And, mm -hmm. and in many cases, still the state governments. And, and it's it's a terrible thing. Well, I'll tell you, why would you not? Why would you not uh, be sa rather safe I'll than tell sorry, you, which I'll is tell where you, we are now. I'll We're tell you in what sorry. This pisses me off about this country. OK, um, for instance, they, they tried to just pass a $15 an hour minimum wage. And they can't even get that done. Now, you tell me who can live on $7 an hour. Who can even, live on 15 And then, I was going to say that, who can live on 15 It should be somewhere around 25 because people are actually going to work. They're doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're owed a certain decent quality of life for doing that, and yet we can't we can't even give that to them. The Republicans go, oh no, you yeah. know, that'll make people just kind of lie back and not work hard. What? But, but, but where's your where's your mind here? I mean, I just don't. I I just find this country incredibly cruel to the working man. You know? I agree. You know? But they did have some union legislation or union talks yesterday, which which uh, which were positive. I didn't read the whole thing about what it. What was because that? I'm pretty much an ignorant individual at this point in my life. No, 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 no. But what was the what was the thing about uh, the unions? Something, some. I just read it briefly. It was a bipartisan um, a note or letter um, about strengthening unions in some way. But I I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing. But, you know, everybody likes to put down unions and fight unions and so on. But I got to tell you, the unions are what gave you at least a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. We didn't even have a minimum wage at a certain point, you know. And people go, well, I don't want to have to join the union. The union gave you a lot of things even if you were never a member of the union mm -hmm. because it lifted the bar, you know. Right. It, it made it, made it uh, uh, you know. So I, I, I don't get it, you know. I, 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 I'm, I'm, and then, then I would, the latest thing that I've gone crazy over is this whole Pepe Le Pew thing. Have you heard about this? Pepe Le Pew? The Warner Brothers has excised Pepe Le Pew from their library. Why? Because he molested the cat? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, it perpetuated, it perpetuated a rape culture. Hmm. Okay. Wasn't he one of your favorite characters? Yeah, I love Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> who didn't love Pepe Le Pew? He was a sweet little skunk who loved everybody. He was wanted... a lover. He was a lover. Yeah. That's all he was. His only mistake was um, he was he was too passionate. Yeah. As I guess the French are. I don't really know the French that well, but I'm assuming from the cartoon alone. And uh, he picked the wrong the wrong species. He didn't know that the cat was not a skunk. Yes. Big mistake. Yeah. And it was that stripe down his back that he got from walking under a painted ladder or something. Right, you know? right. And and it was it was funny. It was it was. Well, I didn't ever think of it as rape. You well, know. Now it is. And we also thought of him as kind of stupid because he couldn't see the fact this was a cat. Yeah. You know. He was he was into bestiality, I think. But, and I well, I I, 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 I think I brought, he knew it was a cat. I brought up the thing that uh, the, this one cartoon of his that where he falls in love with a black panther and every Ooh, time Pew? yeah every time he goes to romance the black panther it tears him to shreds oh i don't remember that it, one yeah yeah and uh, just <laughs> and then pepper the pew's like all cut up and everything but he still had to have and it. finally at the end there's another last scene where he does it again and he gets torn up for the last time and uh he he goes you know i think i'm beginning to like this <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on, that's funny. He's into S and M and bestiality. Yeah, but I mean, and then the Doctor Seuss stuff with the family taking out uh, off several books of Doctor Seuss. 
you know, it's just I, I'm tired of it. I'm so exhausted from all this stuff. And the, yeah. the what I hate most is the term cancel culture. That's being used too much. I don't you even know. know what it means anymore. I don't know what it means anymore. They're using it for things it doesn't even mean any longer. You know. Uh, but I mean, I, ju I just am amazed at, at all the things that are going on. And I just go, you know, I'm 81 years old. I don't have that many more years to live. Please let me live them in peace. Let me live <laughs> them with Pepe Le Pew, please. You know, don't you want to see the whole world collapse? It's coming. It's coming. I, you may it, make it. I may make it. I may <laughs> watch it happen. You know, and I, I go, geez, almighty, you know. I mean, it's just, uh, and I also think the thing that really bothers me is that with the COVID is that I haven't been able to travel, you know, and at this time mm -hmm. of my life, my wife and I would like to do some traveling. Sure. We'd like to go some places and we can't, we're stuck here, even with our two shots now. Yeah. By the way, if you lived in New York, uh, they just lowered the age to 60. So. Does me no good. Well, don't worry. You'll be getting yours within a couple of months, you know? Either way, I've been exposed, so I'm not really that concerned. Well, you know, you can get it again. It, it's, yeah, not, okay. it's not a... Uh, uh, I don't think that there's a, an immunity you get from having it or, or being exposed to it, you know? But then again, you're of an age where you're probably healthy enough that you're not going to see any dire consequences from the whole thing. As I say, it doesn't really matter to me because if it gets me mm -hmm. and I die, I won't know. So, so let me ask matter. you. Let me ask you. Do you miss radio? Um, not so much because I don't really consume it anymore. It's not. It's it's not the thing to go to anymore. Mm -hmm. When I get into the car, I don't turn the radio on. I put my Bluetooth on and go through my phone and and get whatever I need, whatever I need. Yeah. Yeah. Not just not just local stations, which are terrible down here. Do you think radio's deluding itself into believing it still exists? To some extent, yes. Because I always likened it to a, a snake where you cut off the head, and because the rest of the body is still moving, it thinks it's alive. That could be. That yeah. could be. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't consume radio like that. And even, you know, you know, I think. Um, I think that uh, that even Sirius is making good moves in in changing uh, their strategies a little bit and acquiring Pandora. I think that was a great move for them, and I think that that is the future of this medium, this audio medium, is uh, is streaming audio and uh, and what's called podcast now. Yeah, but, but I, there's no need. Yeah, there's no need for anything else. You want to know what the problem is with podcasting, though? I mean, I I I, I find I'm getting less of an audience lately because there's just so much of it out there. That's the problem. There's yeah. so much of it out there that for anybody to make noise, they've got to do something extraordinary to get that noise. They got to be they got to be associated with somebody like CBS, who then goes on their various platforms and advertises the podcast. You know, well, that, that will that will happen. That will happen. And I think I think maybe big radio company. Well, how many big radio companies are there? There's just one really iHeartRadio. Um, I think they, they're starting to uh, grasp that and starting to embrace uh, podcasting in a big way, more so even than their local stations. I hear people on uh, on, lo on the local stations down here that I worked with in New York. This is this is how bad the uh, the radio thing is. Yeah. Um, and and it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't need to exist really anymore like that. You can get music anywhere you want. Most of us have it in our phone. And if you want to listen to something good, then there are pod podcasts that are exceptional to listen to. Yeah. Absolutely exceptional. Yeah. And, th and those will rise to the top. Well, sometimes. I mean, it depends on if they get the publicity and they have the promotion and they have the money for the promotion and so on and so forth. But there are so many podcasts. I What did I see? Something like, I don't know, 20 million podcasts out there? Some some incredible amount. And I'm going, geez, yeah, I remember when I was the only guy doing a podcast. But the, but you have you have different ways to access that and, and to be told about it. The, the, the whole thing when you when you go onto a um, onto a media site, this whole thing where you get the, the strip on the bottom or the strip on the side that says recommended for you. I think that's great. I think that's a really good feature, which nobody had in radio what do we have in radio 
Alex Bennett would be talking about the guy that's on after him mm -hmm. or the guy that's on in the morning, right. the next morning or right. whatever it is. Right. And that was the only real cr a cross promotion or recommendation you got. And I think I think that will change the way things happen. And and the, the bad ones will suffer in the end. I, I, oh, I, I, I like like uh, Gabnet. Uh <laughs> Gabnet is what exactly? <laughs> yeah, right. What is it exactly? I'm beginning to forget. Hey, I think there's a guy in the in the in the building behind you who's going to jump. I'm getting so frustrated with it. I'm thinking about stopping it. I mean, I'm th that frustrated. Where, where, how do I get an audience? How do I how do I uh, go I out there? I told you. I told you this many times. You give them too much. Don't give them that much. Give them once a week. Once a week. Yeah. 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 Give them once a week. Two hours maybe. One hour is 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 fine. How long is a podcast? Usually, it's once a week, thirty minutes. Yeah, people don't consume don't consume entertainment. You the could same be way right. Did. I maybe should do it shorter or not as much. You know, maybe maybe once a week on Friday nights. Yeah, you know, that may be the way to go. You know, I mean, who knows if anybody will even listen then? Maybe I still get the same amount of listeners. Who knows? No, I think you get more listeners. I think you get more listeners because they can they have the week to to uh, to to take in that right. podcast. Right. Um, and, and they don't have to listen to it well, live, little, that, but they can. That little Monday thing we do at four o'clock gets more listeners than any single thing we do. Well, it's convenient. You know, that's that's the that's the great thing about that. Yeah. Well, maybe you should just do that. Well, you see, if I did that, I would probably just do it once a week because right. if I did it. Four or five times a week, everybody would be spoiled. You know, that's that's what take I'm it for you. granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming to you for advice now. See, you're, 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 <laughs> you're coming to the wrong that. guy. Yeah, this is not the guy for advice. So, uh, what's your daily life like? Uh, we're doing this at eleven thirty in the morning. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Like it's nighttime where I am, and it's daytime where you are. Yeah, see? I see that. Yeah. Um, what's uh, well, you know, I, I get up at uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, you know, um, uh, I go to sleep at uh, 9, 30 with my wife. We like two old people with books in our hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, occasionally the TV is on and the rest of the time it, it's filled with uh, looking things up, watching things, reading. Yeah. That's well, here's an average evening with my wife and I, although I start do the show at 10, 30, but before we go to bed. Uh, this is the average uh, night in, in lying in bed watching TV. Did you fart? <laughs> well, it's not. We don't have that problem because ours are very explosive and and, uh, and, and, hear, and obvious and all. obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, As they call in the fireworks business, it's with report. Yeah. Well, what I like about her farting is she kind of she farts and then I smell it and then I go, "Did you fart?" And she goes. Yeah, I guess I did. And then she gets the spray and sprays. And I'm thinking, did she really think she was going to get away with it? She never does. You know? This was why it was necessary for me to come on the show today? To talk about farting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when there's much more important stuff, much more important stuff that we, you know, that's going on in the world that we haven't even touched on yet. The whole Piers Morgan thing. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe that 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 I have to hear that name again in my lifetime. <laughs> Who well, cares? I, when he walked off, I'm sitting there and, and yelling at the screen. Yeah, go back to CNN. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Walk off. Who cares? I don't care about the first the, the the royal family. I don't care about any of this nonsense. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, we knew they were a bunch of entitled pieces of shit. Well, that's true, but maybe not this this uh, this Harry and, and and Megan. Maybe they're decent people. Oh, they sound like they're decent people. Yeah, they sound like they cared more about their sanity and their family than they did about uh, about being a member of the royal family. Plus, he was never going to be king anyway, so he had right. no, he had no, no investment in any of this. You know, well, they call they call one of them the the heir, and the other one is the spare. The spare, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Oof. if if that's a good life, but let's say William dies. Let's just say he dies. Harry doesn't become uh, uh, president. I was going to no, say kid. king. Yeah, his kid, his kid does. So, so Harry had nothing to lose by leaving, except that he lost his uh, uh, protection, and he lost. Uh, you know, he lost probably his salary. Yeah. 
I don't think he really cares about that because he can he can support himself in other ways, being part of that uh, yeah. royal family background. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. We've talked about farting. Yeah. And we talked about what else? Did we talked about we talked about COVID. We talked about Meghan and Harry. We talked mm-hmm. about uh, important about your cat. Yeah. You know. And I still think if you look behind it in the building behind you, there's a guy that's trying to jump from the window. Right you there. Watch. Right there. You see him? Yes. Right yeah, there. Right there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> jump. Jump. Uh, you know, I, I, I love this green screen. It's the one thing I bought that I have a good time with. You Is know? it a big screen behind you? Oh, yeah. It's big. Yeah. It's big. And it comes down easy, too. Let me show you what Oh, happens. yeah. Look at this. Watch this, folks. Watch I was thinking this. of getting one. Watch, but uh, Watch this. I just pull, push down on the top, uh, and then this comes down. Oh, see? see? I like that. See? Then I just pull it right back up. Sure, cool? you're just at the point of life where you're just throwing money away. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, right. Let me get this. Toys. It's all about toys. Right. All 150 bucks of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Oh, is that how much it costs? Yeah. I got to get, yeah. get one. We got to do this more often. I really enjoy this. You know? All you have to do is send that one word text to me. When? When. And, okay, and I we'll, will do we'll that. We'll get it going. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Uh, the, ladies and gentlemen, that's it's my former producer and emotionally my producer for life, uh, Albert Ooh, Reynoso. That's Thank tough. you. Thank you, Albert. Thank you for having me. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, there's Ra- Albert, and uh, we love having Albert on. A few technical little difficulties. I think we went out of sync at one point. Now, in fact, I'm. am I still out of sync? Hmm. That's uh, amazing. I, I give up. I give up. I don't understand uh, why... Oh, I see. Okay, well, let me do this. Okay, if I do this, uh, there. I think I'm a little more in sync. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I get, You know something? I'm giving up on this technology. I've just had it, okay? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me see here. What happens? If I go here and I try and do this, it might put it in better sync. I don't know. It'll freeze it up for a moment. And then we will get back into sync. And we will hope. See how I'm frozen like that? See? And then all of a sudden, uh, I will start getting uh, just better and better and better. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. See? Now I'm in sync. All right. I, I, had, to, uh, <laughs> I had to restart something. It's, you know what it is? I just, uh, it, it's gotten to the point where I just, it's one putting out one fire after another. And I, I don't know what to say, you know, just one fire after another. Anyway, let's uh, let's go to our citizen panel. They're uh, out there ready and waiting to go. And if I just go admit all, uh, they will start. Uh, uh, well, there we go. There we go. Now we're joining. And oh, look who we got here. Oh, oh so far we've got uh, Alan. And we've got Dan Meyer, and we've got Charlie Wallace, and we've got Jeffrey Stein. Hi, everybody. How are you this evening? Hi. Hmm? Yeah. How's it going in Texas, Charlie? Oh, it's beautiful weather. Yeah. Yeah, we have beautiful weather here, too. And again, I didn't go out. I don't know why, but I didn't go out. Yeah. No. Hmm. So we get a new hat to show on. What? Oh, your mic is really loud yeah, there. Pretty high. Alan. Who, whose mic? Mine is? Yeah, yours is really I haven't done anything. I don't know. It's Windows. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Is Let there... me see if I can change it. Turn it up you here. can actually, I think, can't, can't you go into your um, into your uh, Zoom panel or something and it uh, allows you to... Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Let's see. Let's see if this yeah, works better. Floor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, we we like to level everybody out. And if anybody else yeah. wants to call, we'd love to hear from you. Um, How are my levels, by the way? <laughs> what? How are my levels, by the way? Your levels are fine, Dan. Okay. How am I now? Now, if we just keep your interference down and let other people talk, I think we'll be okay. You know? 
How am I now? You're like, fine. I... You're good. You're good. Yeah. All right. uh, you know, um, geez, is this all we're going to have tonight? No, Son of no. a bitch. What? What's going on? Where is everybody? Wait, where is everybody? Oh, I, I get a New York police hat to show I'm pro New York, and Robert doesn't show up this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. we'll see. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. You know, we don't know. Uh, I, I'm thinking of not appearing here. To be honest with you, yeah, I'm thinking of maybe just I might take next week <laughs> off. I don't know. I I, I, I I'm thinking about uh, making some changes around here because I find that uh, that we're not getting the amount of listeners that we were getting. Now I don't know if that's because there's no politics to talk about and there's you know people aren't angry about stuff and uh, you know uh, whatever. But it, I it, think. I think mm-hmm. you need to get Phil back on the show. No, I don't. No, I don't think. I if he wants to come back, he's oh, he's he never was kicked off. You know, mm-hmm. I just tried to find a solution by having him on once a week. Um, mm-hmm. That's working great. What? Yeah, that's working great. Having him on once a week by himself. Yeah, great. yeah. I, I think I, th- I think it does work out very well. I really enjoy talking to him, even though sometimes he still drives me crazy. But uh, I don't know. I was thinking about maybe going to one day a week, you know, and the Monday thing. And uh, two hours, two uh, hours on one day a week. Maybe. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I mean, what else do you have to do in your life? Well, uh, you know, I mean, all, all I'm saying is, is that I find that lately, at least the last couple of weeks, the numbers of people a who call the show is down. Yeah. And the number of uh, of uh, people who are watching it is down. Okay. Well, right now there's a fairly good number, but uh, yeah. you know, I just and I I don't I don't know how to deal with it. I mean, I I don't I, I wouldn't mind doing it. I mean, I'm exhausted these days. Okay. I don't know why. I'm just tired all the time. Uh, it could be just from having been indoors for the last year, and uh, that you know, it's it, a lot of people have got what they call COVID fatigue. Okay, yeah, yep. uh, but uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm I am tired as it is, and so to do this show is a bit of a of a of a work for me, and I don't mind doing it if people listen to it. But if they're not I listening like, to it, why should I do it? I liked your you last know? guest, the guest you had on for the past half hour. You mean you mean Albert? Albert. Yeah, yeah. Well, Al, Al, mo- all these people are pretty familiar with Albert if they ever listen to my radio shows. Uh, at Sirius XM because he was my producer there for like nine years, uh, yeah. and uh, very smart guy. I I'm love still to trying to figure out who you are. So you're still trying <laughs> to figure out who I am. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, it's, I remember. It's, it's, had, it's like had, I. It's like it says on my Facebook page. I used to be a big shot. I remember like coming across the Bay Bridge one way or the other and some huge billboard. Alex Bennett and somebody else or something. No? No, there was never an Alex Bennett and somebody else. Uh, maybe just Alex Bennett. Yes, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't no, they but, Lori Thompson with you too? Yeah. 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 Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I had... Uh, bus. Huh? It was on the buses. Remember on the buses? On the buses. We had several yeah. different campaigns for that. Uh one of which was uh, Alex Bennett isn't for everyone. <laughs> was one of them, <laughs> and, um, and then we had bumper stickers that said Alex is for me and Alex isn't for me. Two different bumper stickers, and you could choose which one you wanted. And, Husband and wife. Yeah, and then there was a, a big uh, billboard uh, in my KMEL days in San Francisco that was on the. Bay Bridge, right off the Bay Bridge on a that's, building, that, big, big giant one saw. with me pointing like this, and it goes, I don't take no requests. I think I think that's the one I remember. Yeah. And then there was another one. You know what's very funny about all those advertising campaigns? I, I was getting great ratings in San Francisco, really terrific ratings. And they would do an advertising campaign, and all of a sudden the ratings would dump. <laughs> <laughs> and so so they would say to me they come into me and they go oh by the way we've just decided from the next quarter 
We're buying out every billboard in San Francisco. We're going to plaster your face all over town. And I went, please don't. <laughs> and they went, why? I said, the ratings will go down. They said, no, nah, that's bullshit, you know? So they would run the, the, the billboards, right? And the ratings went down. I can never figure that one out. You would think they would go up, right? That would that's the reason yeah, yeah. you you advertise on yeah. billboards. No advertising. And it wasn't this? you know, I wasn't that ugly in those days. You know, now I have a face that would frighten children. But you know, in those days, I you know, I looked okay and Vincent Price. Who was who Vincent was Tom Price? Luke? What? Yeah. What did you say, Alan? Alan? Who huh? is Tom Lou? He's writing on the chat. Yeah. It's not the lack of Phil that's the problem. It's too much Alan. <laughs> Alan is the new Phil. <laughs> the poison. You know, there is always. Ramp. Don't feel bad about that, Alan. Oh, I don't. I don't you know, care. Forget about him. Laugh. Forget about him, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. Every time, I it could be if you disappeared, then it would be Dan they would hate, and if he disappeared, <laughs> it would be like John Larkin they would hate. And if he went away, it would be Charlie Wallace they would hate. And ultimately, they would all just detest Jeff. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. always somebody that I have on that they don't like on. You know. Well, it remember one guy was very angry with me about something. Was it? Did, did, we, did we have People something? People need stuff to complain about. I don't remember anybody ever being angry with you, Jeff. How can they be angry oh, with yeah, you? One guy complained. I mean, you're yeah. a nice guy. Right. You know, I can see you how they feel. Never have a problem, <laughs> Jeff. I see how they can never feel. Never have a problem, Jeff. I'll come over and kick their ass. I can see how they can feel that I'm a piece of shit or whatever. But you, come on. You're a nice guy. That's right. Well, why doesn't, Mr., that, uh, hmm? why doesn't Mr. Tom Lou get on the show? And Yeah, Tom, anything? come on. Yeah, call the show. It's all those things. Right. And Forbin Colossus, people if like that. He doesn't get on the show and just writes on the side. He's pretty worthless to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he didn't have the guts to call in. Yeah. There you go. Wasn't there an advert for Alex and Joe Rogelski? Uh, no, I don't think there was. Joe Rogelski was my newsman in San Francisco for a while. And um, no, no. Uh, but, but. I did on, I think with some of the ads, I I said that if they were going to advertise the show uh, uh, or, or, or do press releases on the show, that they always, because I had a newswoman named Lori Thompson, that I always wanted them to say Al, uh, the Alex Bennett program with Lori Thompson, okay, and that they always had to mention her name. Um and I thought that was important, you know. I thought that was definitely important. I always got, I always, I always got my people who work with me certain billing, and in the case of Lori, I actually got her a gigantic amount of money for being my newswoman, just simply by saying, uh, "I will sign a new contract with you, but I won't sign it until you make a deal with Lori first. Ah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so she that's, went that's, in and she, you know, yeah. she could ask, she could ask for, you know, wax lips if she wanted them in her contract and she'd get them, you know. So it was a, still radio? What? Is she still doing radio? I don't know if she's still doing radio or not. Occasionally I hear that she's gone back and done radio for a while and then she's not doing it and now I heard she's getting married. Which would be a first for her cuz I think I think she's in her 60s now. And Wasn't she, your mother on the on your show in San Francisco at one time too? Yes, she was. She was not only on my show; she had her own show. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that part I don't remember. She That's had her own show right. on uh, on uh, Sunday nights called Top uh, Ruth Bennett's Top Ten Countdown. My seventy seven year old mother. Okay. Uh, gee, it's funny for me to think of that because now I'm older than she was when she was doing the radio program. And she was uh, working in San Francisco and you were Miami. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. No, 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 no. She was gone. I just by remember then. her coming on one time or something. Well, like that. no, I, I've told this story before, but it's really true and it's strange. My mother, they decided to give my mother a show 
because they figured out they'll capitalize on my popularity at KMEL. And um, they gave her the show on Sundays. Well, now I come along and I say, oh, sorry, guys, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Where are you going? I'm going across town. Somebody wants to hire me for a scad loads more money than you're willing to pay me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I always being the whore, I'll go where the money is. I don't think you can blame me for that. Sure. Plus, they were giving me a lot of creative freedom. I own the show, everything, you know, the, the whole nine yards. So it was something they couldn't, they couldn't do. And so they then decided they were going to maybe sue me for leaving them. Oh, no. And so I had to lawyer up. All right. So now I'm meeting with my lawyers and they say, your mother has a show on KMEL, doesn't she? I said, yeah. They gave her a show. It's, it's terrific. It's wonderful that she has it. Uh, and uh, the next thing the lawyer says to me is, well, don't talk to her. I said, what? <laughs> what? He said, she, she works for the enemy now. Don't talk to her. I said, she's my mother. I've got to talk to her. It's the law, you know? <laughs> And 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 they, they finally they said, well, if you got to talk to her, don't don't talk about the case. Oh uh, yeah, right. I know that. Okay. Plus, she doesn't get, give a shit about the case. She cares about why I didn't come over to dinner last Sunday. You know, <laughs> or that girl I'm now dating that she doesn't like. You know. So. Oh, I, so now I see Tom Liu writes that the only two people he's ever objected by, uh, object, objected is me, to is me and Phil. Yeah. You know, I, I think this guy has sex with monkeys or something. I don't know. It's kind of strange. Uh, I thought you said you didn't give a shit. Sounds like yeah. it's getting under your skin. No, I'm just giving him <laughs> shit on the show because he's following the show. Well, you do, get, you, get, you do give him. a shit, At don't you, Alan? following the show. Right? But anyway, so that was the story with my mother. And uh, it uh, it was, you know, it was hilarious. It was just hilarious. And she kept her, they kept her on for about, I don't know, maybe three or four months after I left. And then they kind of dumped her, you know. So, and then I had to apologize to my mother. Sorry, mom, that you lost your show, and it was because of me, <laughs> you know. But that show biz, mom, you're used to it now. This is the radio business. Got to get used to it. Hey, uh, Kevin. Kevin, you don't remember my mother on the radio, do you? Uh, I remember a couple times you talked to her on the radio. Yeah, I talked. I talked to her on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do that. Yeah, uh, because my mother, my mother was a great prop. You know, she. That's, was, that's when Howard stole all that crap from you too. Well, my mother, my mother said to me once, she, we, 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 uh, Kevin Pollock decided to do a roast for me at uh, at uh, the Punchline, uh, and uh, my mother was invited to be one of the people to roast me. And uh, she said to me, but I don't, I, I don't know how to get up in front of people and I don't know how to make, you know, say things that will make people laugh. I said, Mom, you're 77 years old. Anything that comes out of your mouth will make them laugh. Believe me. And I was right. She got up and she, anything she said... They found hilarious because you go, and my son, Alex, that's what he calls himself. It's not really his name. And they would go crazy, <laughs> you know. And I said, Mom, you're 77. You can get away with anything. So nice. just like at 81, I can almost get away with anything. Yeah. Number one, because nobody listens. And secondly, because nobody takes what I say seriously anymore. Nobody want, nobody listens to old people. Are you kidding me? But anyway, so my mother was my mother was a big hit, such a big hit that she was asked to be on the Johnny Carson show. Wow! Yeah, really? Yeah, which pissed me off because then I <laughs> then I then I got jealous. I went, yeah, my mother. They'll 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 get my mother to be on the Johnny Carson show, but I never get the call. Okay. Uh, yeah. Your mom's more famous than you. Almost. And then they did a thing. They did a couple of things with her. On like uh, there was a thing called Evening Magazine that the Westinghouse TV stations had for a couple of uh, years, and she was on that. Uh, it was syndicated all across the country. My mother was on it. Yeah, she got more publicity than I did. 
because she was being billed as the world's oldest disc jockey. You really? can't yeah. be that, right? <laughs> so, well, you're gonna have to beat her. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me for uh, brushing my eyes tonight, but they've been tearing all day. They've they been must terrible. Be the dust from well, outside. Well, number one, it's the allergies. But they're doing this pointing in the building, and there is dust everywhere. I went and looked out on the sill today. It was that thick. You're going to have to wear a mask in your own house. Yeah, and I've got this uh, this uh, air purifier that's got this little ring on it that's green when everything's fine, and you know, it's yeah. blue when everything's fine, then it goes green when it's not so fine, and then orange when it's so-so, and then when it's deadly, it turns red. Well, today it was red all day because of the oh, pointing. Man. They're killing you. They're killing me. So my eyes have been burning all day. So please excuse me if they look a little shot, as it were. Anybody hear Biden's speech tonight? Yes. Speaking of old men that they are listening to. Well, you know, I kind of tuned out. Oh. Well, pretty boring. Huh? It was pretty boring. Yeah, yeah, very boring. You know, I yeah. mean, let's face it. At least you're not yelling at your TV screen, shut the yeah, fuck yeah. up. You know, yeah. like or we used to. We'll take boring at this point. Yeah. You know? Yes. Well, yeah. I was very but, happy. Yeah. I, I, Everything you said. I'm with you, Jeff. Well, yeah. I thought I thought I thought it was slightly on the boring side. I don't think he's particularly a good public speaker. No, no. You know. Yeah, but he was he very was empathetic. Scared. He was, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. he was. He was thoughtful, and that's all you needed to hear. It, it, it sounded like your president cared about you. Yeah. Okay, exactly. which you never got that feeling from Trump. You never got no, the feeling no. he cared about you. There's no business transaction. Well, he's been through it, too. I mean, he's lost close yeah. people in his family, and he realizes a lot of people out here that lost their close people. Well, I, he understood more than that. I mean, he understood the whole thing about being out of work. You know, that came yep. up, you know. I yep. just found it wasn't exciting, so I didn't really have to listen to it. I knew what he was going to say. He wasn't going to say <laughs> anything that yeah, was... Yeah, he didn't, and he didn't draw it out either. It was a 20-minute speech and goodbye. Yeah, you but, know, was, I mean, and was... he, he said, uh, I think he, um, um, you know, he said some very, very, uh, what could we call it, uh, 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 empathetic empathetic things to make people feel a little better about themselves told them that things were getting done to get you know get things straightened out yeah i don't and think then said yeah. we're moving on let's go i don't think he makes enough of a of a cause though for the fact that it's up to us to do our duty <clears throat> to soften this whole thing you know well, i don't know he, i thought he was he, you know he said i got i need your help you know, we're, yeah. we're with Trump. That Trump would be going, "Don't worry, I'm so great. You got nothing to worry about." Yeah, but when, he, he did he, do that. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least he said, "Look, man, I need your help. You gotta fucking be safe." Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things we gotta do. Otherwise, this thing's going to turn around the other direction, and yeah. it has in some places. I mean, we still have. Well, one day we, I think things are getting better, and we're down to sixty-three deaths, and now we're up to eighty today. People are loosening up again. But you had a funny line, Dan, online, uh, which was, it oh, yeah. seems as though uh, a, 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 every woman that comes forward and accuses him, yeah. uh, the age limit goes down by five years. Yeah, for the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, hey, maybe maybe that's maybe they're connected. You know? Yeah. So the, so the director of the CDC, this woman, she's very smart, very good. Scientist, she said that we have a little over 10% of the people in this country have at least one vaccine, and about another five or six percent of the country have some natural immunity from having COVID. But that's nowhere near, obviously, what we need before we can start opening up. Yeah, and right. she said it's a shame that people are opening up. Give it a couple months, and we'd probably be all able to open well, up. Well, Charlie, uh, 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 give me the the, your feeling on Dr. this. Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom. Well, you know, uh, but, you know, what's going on in Texas is just beyond the pale. I mean, yeah, you could open up a few things. You could lighten up a little bit if the deaths have gone down or something like that. But you to say no masks, no masks, 100% occupancy. 
I was reading where they did that in Austin, Texas, which is where you live, right? Yep. And uh, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> that that it actually the 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 um, the problems have kind of gotten a little worse again in in yeah. in, in yeah. Texas. Yeah, yeah, the num the numbers are going up. I mean, you would think some guy in a wheelchair would know what it's like to be sick. Yeah. You know, have some empathy for people. He doesn't. Oh, we got oh, to open it up. Republican. Huh? Republicans don't have empathy. Oh, yeah. Speak of the Republicans. You got to love this Senator Wicker from Mississippi. He still thinks that he voted yes. Yeah. On this. On, on oh, the, yeah. On the, it was on the news today talking. Yeah. And I'm like. Did you miss something? I mean, it's all over the news. But he's saying voted? he voted. No. He voted for the bill. That's what well, he's. He's claiming. touting how great yeah. it is. He voted he's against, it, and he, and he's, against it. Well, here's yeah, the. He's here's, touting all the yeah. restaurants. Yeah. Here's the part I don't get. Okay, is isn't this approximately, for the most part, with a few exceptions, that corporations aren't getting as much of a l l land fall out of this or lands well what's what's the word i'm looking for i can't talk anymore when, uh, i i should give up i don't know why i'm doing this any longer oh uh, uh, because uh, you're like enough, enough of a windfall yeah uh for the uh, uh corporations outside of it, it isn't that way it's pretty much the same bill they voted for before the republicans yeah, yeah. 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 if you watched uh less fun if you watch C-SPAN afterwards, after the 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 all this stuff blew over, and they had their after their after speeches, and uh, they had the agenda, Scalisi, Scalisi, is it? And uh, Scalise, yes. And Scalise. and Hoyer, is it Hoyer? I think he's the uh, the other guy on the Democratic side. Denny Hoyer. They went at it today, and uh, it was pretty interesting because he kept talking back and forth about you know changing the schedule and. And how we shouldn't have to wear masks when this comes back, when they come back to session. And then he started going, he started going at uh, <clears throat> Steny Hoyer about the uh, the fact that, you know, we're going into a socialist state and everything. And oh boy, he, he, fli he flipped his lid and said, you know, this is the kind of crap that you guys keep well, bringing so how, up. Well, so how was Trump's bill any different? Basically, but it wasn't, and that's what he no. said. He said this bill was no different, except for the fact that it benefited the one percent, and this now benefits four fifths of the lower percent. Yeah, and you guys, the people didn't who really need do anything yeah. to, to help it, you right. didn't help the American people, but you sure as hell helped corporate America. So, oh, yeah. there's your difference, buddy. What I didn't yeah. get, what I didn't <clears throat> get though, is, is how much we're gonna get. Let me explain this. I hear it's what fourteen hundred dollars a person. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, so that would mean that between Marjorie and I, we should get twenty eight hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's the problem. What's the limit on a on a couple filing? I think it's one hundred sixty thousand. One hundred sixty thousand. We might make it by a few pennies. Uh, if if but. If, if, if we file a joint <clears throat> return, okay, but I don't make that kind of money. I make like my social security and I make some union pension and maybe, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I bring in about $35,000 a year. All right. Um, so she, and she brings in well over a hundred thousand dollars a year. All right. Okay. So we got all that straight now. Yeah. Plus, she also gets the Social Security, too, so that's a little bit more. All right. Now, here's the question. Uh, is it because we file jointly that that money is what we're thinking of? Yes. Or can I, yeah. can yeah. I say, yeah, hey. I, I'm, in the same, I'm in the same boat. I thought, oh, maybe I'll just file, you know, separately. And it, don't, it, it wouldn't work. Man, you're going to get so We're many both many underneath questions. anyway, but I thought it's the same thing. If I was working, it would work the same way. Yeah, because you're yeah. going to get so many listeners now talking about tax. Yeah, you're going to get a whole. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the just other, the I'm, other thing that was yeah. pissing me off today on, when I was watching C-SPAN is that the mm -hmm. Republicans were, you know, talking about the open border and everything else, mm -hmm. and they were saying stuff like, "Now all these people that are coming over the border now, 
Now, as soon as they come over the border, they get a check. Yeah, that's how, does, how, how is that possible if they don't, number one, they don't file taxes. <laughs> number two, they don't even have a social security number. How are they getting a check? Well, my yeah. question is this. This is the arguments that they're bringing up over there. They're just yeah. lying. Yeah, it, yeah they're it, just lying, and they know it's just constituents. They're just constituents. Also, is, is, to, is the money. the bullshit. Okay, is the money that we're going to get based upon what we make before taxes or after taxes? It's, probably it's before, after probably. it's whatever you whatever uh, your whatever your adjusted gross income is correct out. so if if indeed we pay a lot of taxes here so it, oh that could be then okay so it's mm -hmm. it's the adjusted income after taxes here's the cool thing alex mm -hmm. if you don't get a check or it doesn't get deposited in your account you mm -hmm. probably didn't qualify and that made it simple well, it makes it simple, but if maybe I should be getting it and they didn't send it to me. Well, yeah, yeah you can always. We got a letter saying that we get uh, $1,200. You got a letter? As a Already? Couple. Yeah, and we got a, no, we didn't get the money, but we got a well, letter. Wait a minute, this was last time though, right? Yeah. The last time. This, yeah, they just this, signed it again today. That was 1200 last time. It's 1400 right. this yeah, it's time. Yeah, 1400 this time. And I think it was only twelve hundred. No, it was six hundred dollars. Oh, six hundred dollars. It, it, it was six hundred dollars a person, and right. twelve hundred dollars for a family of two. All they're yeah. doing is trying to catch up to the two thousand that Trump wanted. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and now they're going to make it fourteen hundred per person. So that'd be twenty eight hundred for she and I. And if you have a family, if you have a family, it's yeah. fifty four hundred. A family of four, mm -hmm. it's fifty four hundred. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It's time to get some kids. That, that could get yeah, yeah. That could no. That could be a really nice payday for some people. You know, uh, absolutely right. You know, so thousand two hundred. That's what I got. It, you know, I'm. I just question though. See, I mean, Marjorie and I could use it. It'd be nice if we got it. Okay, right. We have a couch, a new couch we want to buy. A couple other things. But we're not going to spend it in the same way that somebody who really needs this money is going to spend it. Right. So my question is, should we be getting it? This is not give it to me. Our... As long as you put it back into the economy, what? that's what they want. What'd you, yeah, what'd you say, Jeff? care about. What'd you right. say, Jeff? You're holding well, up so some. We don't need this, this money for food. Right. I mean, we don't have to, we're not worried about paying our stuff we're not going to be thrown out i mean we're retired whatever and i know. mean if they if they said to me look uh we want to give your money to some poorer people i, I would, would say, say sure. i would say sure yeah yeah i would say okay yeah As a matter of fact pam wants to do that personally well, well you could you could do that to. you could do that it's just a question of how you go about it what do you do walk out in the street and say anybody want my check you just know, about. You, you cash it first and then hand out yeah. cash. Okay. She's gonna give There's it to all a kinds charity. of charities you could give it to if that's what that's you're right. worried about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And yeah. get a tax write off. Yep. Yep. And, 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 Alex, I think you want to take your check, yours and, and your wife's, cash them, put a sign on that says, I'm Alex Bennett, hang out in the corner and hand out $50 bills. And a lot of people will know you. You will have to fight my wife on that one. Oh, really? She wants the money. She oh, I thought she didn't She's want already to with, arguing with me that I better give her her half. Oh, wow. Okay. That, you know, that, that I, can't, uh, I can't use her half. Or we can't yeah. use it as a family. you got to realize, I've got a situation here where I married a woman. Uh, in our, she was in her 70s when I married her. Oh, no, she was actually maybe a little less than that. I don't know. No, no. I was in my 70s. She was in her late 60s. And uh, we have never had a joint bank account because mm. she doesn't want a joint bank account. I've got my money. You've got your money. I'm going, what the hell is it? Every month, she actually gives me money from her account to take care of the, of the part, half of the cable bill, half and of the electric That's bill. That's the way to do it. Yeah, same thing don't, here. I never had a joint account. Yeah, like don't commingle. That's commingle. Don't put the two accounts together. That way, when she leaves you, 
you're, you're on the corner and she has the apartment. That's serious, hey, Alan. She... That is serious because there's so many people I know, so many couples I know where one or the other just ran off with the money and left the other one holding the bag. I, I, I know it's serious. Really? Yeah. Uh, my yeah. roommate got screwed by his ex-wife. That's why I, we she never left, had left them all the bills. Account. Yeah, it's okay. She won't have a joint bank account, but we can file our taxes jointly. Well, that's because yeah, you get you more money that. back that way. Yeah, that's what we always did. Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, um, I don't think I would have to pay any taxes. I mean, much of taxes. If it was just me alone. But with the two of us, she's making a decent amount of money. So the two things coming together, we wind up putting out a chunk of money. Yeah. So. Yeah. Whatever. Jeffrey, <laughs> Jeffrey, when we get offline, I'll get you my PO box. Send me the money. All right. <laughs> I'll take it. No, but all I'm saying well, is, let's uh, see who's the neediest on the panel. All I'm saying is, there's some of us that don't need don't need the money. Okay. I want the money yeah. in Bitcoin. In Bitcoin? Yeah. No, I don't. Really? No, me either. That could go to zero overnight. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, no I way. That, that, that's too dicey for me. No, 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 man. You got it's it's not going anywhere. I'll tell you. Part of the problem for me is the fourteen hundred dollars is only a few hundred dollars more than my monthly um, medical insurance that I have to pay. Being uh, not not working for anybody else, I got to pay my own medical insurance. Is like eleven or twelve hundred dollars a month. Is it that much money a month? Jeez. Isn't that disgusting? Man. Isn't that just well? Yeah, what well, happens is America. of course. But, but is, you know, there was a time when you could buy insurance dirt cheap because the insurance companies were not allowed to make a profit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think when Reagan came into office or somebody like that, that went out the window. All of a sudden, they were allowed to make a profit, and now you're paying eleven, twelve hundred dollars a month for your yep. insurance. Well, I'm I'm too young for Medicare by a couple of years, mm -hmm. so when I get when I get older, I can get Medicare. Okay, but let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, are, you, are you renting where you're living? No. Oh, are you um, own it? Am I what? Do you own it? Uh, the bank and I, but I own most of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, okay. I I owe about a hundred, and the property, the house that I live in, is worth about one and a half million. Phil Meyer, how much money do you pay for rent? Phil Meyer. Oh, well, Phil Meyer. I mean Dan Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh man, I, I'd be embarrassed to tell you it's so low here in in uh, hillbillyology land, Middletown. I pay four seventy five a month. Okay, you're paying a third of what he pays in insurance for health I know. insurance. Yeah. I know. Isn't that but you terrible? probably get insurance to the school district, don't you, Dan? How about you, Charlie? What's your no, what's your rent, no, Charlie? Reason. What's your rent, Charlie? I'm Medicaid. My, my rent is eight hundred and fifty dollars a month. Eight hundred and fifty dollars a month. Still yeah. far less than he's yeah, paying for it. for insurance. I mean, that's insane. Less than Houston or Dallas, too. Yeah, that's okay. insane. I'm I'm paying fourteen hundred for a tiny studio. Yeah. Well, we pay oh, we pay three hundred. We pay between the two of us. I think we pay a little over six hundred dollars in for for medical insurance every month. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I don't pay anything. You, oh yeah, you've got your because you, I, I got my my pension and stuff from working for the state for thirty years. Yeah, see, okay, so they pay That's everything. Cool. They pay a hundred. The, the only thing that made me feel good, I went on to my insurance today, and the only charge I've had to this month. It was for a neuropathy visit with my doctor on the on the tube, and uh, the government said that he charged like two hundred dollars, and the, the government said, "Well, it's only seventy seventy eight dollars." Okay, is all the the government would pay, but the fact was that I had to pay it because I hadn't met my minimum deductible from the government. All right. And I thought, well, you know, then I'll get a bill from my doctor for $78, right? Mm -hmm. No. My insurance, which we got, we just got the best plan we could find, mm -hmm. took care of that deductible amount and paid it out. So I didn't owe anything. Zero. 
no bill. So I, it was the first time I was happy we had this new plan. Wow. Uh, we're not paying for it, though. Her company is paying for it. So so the interesting thing about my insurance, you think that's expensive. Uh -huh. My retirement pays 50%. So my 50% is $1,100. Your 50%? God. Man. Yep. Oh. You bet. What? You bet. My retirement, yeah. They don't pay dental anymore than I, now that I'm retired. Nothing. You know, I got to pay all that out of pocket. Jesus Christ. Hmm. You're getting screwed. Well, yeah. <laughs> Trouble is, is that, I you mean, know, you can't do without medical insurance. I know. Uh, when you have assets. And if you have assets, the hospital will come after you. Yeah. So you got to have medical insurance. Well, and believe yeah. me, I, I, I have enough prescriptions to make us all happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I tell you it. what I did. What I did with prescriptions is I've just found I'm I'm now moving all my prescriptions over to Costco. Yeah. And I'm moving them over to Costco without my insurance. Mm -hmm. I know I've said this before, <laughs> but I'm going to bring it up again because I want people to know this, that yes. you can probably most of you, unless you have an extraordinary thing that you're you know, the prescription that you have to have every month. Mm -hmm. I am told Costco do not charge my, do not charge it to my uh, pharmacy plan. And the reason I didn't is because there's a deductible there. Without the deductible, all the drugs are cheaper than they would cost me if I bought them at my pharmacy, my local Walgreens here. I mean, I, I, I mention again the boner pill, you know, the Cialis uh, generic. Right. 300, uh, what was it? No, <clears throat> no, it's $450 a month. Or for wow. three months, excuse me, for three months. Yeah. At no, Costco, it's $25. Yeah. Just and that's here. without the insurance. That's without the insurance. Is that it, it, as Kirkland? Huh? Is it marketed Kirkland. as Kirkland? Kirkland yes, boner Kirkland pills? boner pills. That's what it That's says. Right. Kirkland there. boner pills. Packs of two. No, I. But here's what <laughs> I, you know. I've mentioned this before. I've said this on the program. I've complained about it on the program, and I don't understand it. Why is it that this is costing me? Uh, it, that it costs that much? Is there's, there's that much disparity between yeah. what the and and where I'm getting where I could get the boner pill from is Express Scripts which is the biggest prescription drug company yeah. in America. But okay. They're also the biggest rip off in the country. Yes. But how come theirs is 425 450 dollars and Costco somehow seems to know how to buy it for 2598 or something like that. I don't know. And yes. they're making money on it at Costco. Probably. Either that or they're getting a hell of a lot of goodwill my, my and some people with, with really heck of good boners. You know. So by having the, the health plan that I do, my prescriptions and doctor visits are relatively cheap. You know, I pay $10 to see the doctor. Uh, 100-day prescriptions are $10 if it's, uh, you know, generic, $20 if it's name brand. So my out-of-pocket expenses after the, the insurance payment are quite reasonable. Yeah, but you're paying eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars a month yeah. for the insurance payment. That's what I'm saying. It does. It's not like this. You're getting this for free. Nope. You know. Nope. nope. But um, uh, I, I, uh, I was, I, you know, it, it's just we have to reexamine insurance. Okay. And I think everybody should be allowed to get Medicare for all. That's yes. all there is to it. And these insurance companies should once again be forced to be nonprofits and uh, to keep their prices as low as humanly possible. They do it up in Canada. Yeah. That's why a lot of people run off to Canada to buy their prescription drugs. It's like a country that's nothing but Costco, you know. So, I mean. Uh, I, I think tomorrow we all ought to open a bottle of white wine and have a glass of wine with Jeffrey. Mm, that sounds good. No wonder he's so lively. I think that's the third <laughs> glass he's gone through. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. It's good for your heart, too, isn't it, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. Wine's good for the heart. Oh, yeah. Alan's definitely the narco here. He spots any uh, 
He's any and all vices that anybody's yeah. doing on the panel. Yeah. He's smoking weed. He's drinking wine. Well, we're I waiting. Like wine. It's the I drink wine, it's wine the too. Opinion. You gotta, you gotta get somebody up. Something. Supposedly, uh, we're we're supposedly gonna they're gonna vote on it soon on legalizing, you know, pot in New York. I mean, just for non medicinal uses. I, I I wish that they would legalize it across the country. Me if too. people wanna, uh, there's a lot less car accidents, a lot less fights and stuff like that when they're under marijuana versus alcohol and alcohol is legal. Yeah. Either Kevin, either Kevin is, is frozen or he's asleep. Oh, the, hi, Kevin. Uh, How oh, are you? He's looking at his. Oh, cell phone. looking at his cell phone. Oh, okay. Mm. But um, oh, I, 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 you know, the, uh, all of a sudden, our governor is all for making pot legal. Uh, and, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he's, uh, yeah. he's going to give you guys everything now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. every time every time another woman comes out and claims that she was molested by him, yeah. we get something out of it. Yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. He's a five five more years younger. Well, what is what is that? All right. What do you want? Yeah. What is that that you're drinking there? Jameson. <laughs> oh, Jameson. It looks like oh, urine. Jameson. Doesn't it look like a glass of urine? Irish whiskey. You know, that's the one thing I don't do. I don't drink alcohol. Oh. I don't think I, I don't know nobody's perfect. perfect. Nobody's perfect. Did Nobody's you say? perfect. Yeah, really. Well, I just I you know, I don't does this sound weird? I, I never like the taste of the stuff. You know That's a lot. You know, and that includes wine and beer. Although I have to say that on a hot day I have had a beer and it was pretty refreshing. You know. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm, are you a dr do you drink at all, Kevin? I never see you with a glass there. Every once in a while, because of the meds, I don't drink that much. But yeah. every once in a while, I used to love drinking beer. What would the meds the if you, if you did it now with the meds? Uh, you're taking meds for what? Your back or whatever that problem yeah. is. Yeah. My feet, my yeah. ankle. Yeah. What would it do to you? It just don't make me feel good. Oh really? Oh okay. So yeah. it takes the alcohol and what is something that yeah, would make you feel good and changes the Yeah, it makes me feel like shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um kind of like listening to Trump on TV. <laughs> I I just never liked Better than it. That. I never liked the taste of uh of uh alcohol. Oh, I like me a good yeah. good whiskey or a good Oh yeah. good beer. Or... You don't, you don't like like a really good glass of wine? Alex, with dinner, when maybe with a really, it's wasted on me. Oh, it's man. absolutely wasted on me. I there was the a wine. time when there was a red wine that I bought up in Sonoma that I liked, and I'm trying to remember the name of it now. And I really did. Li it was a white wine, and I really liked it. It was pretty good. It was a pretty good wine. But that was the only time I ever got hooked on a wine. I bought several bottles of that stuff and kept it around the house because it was it was pretty good. I have a wine collection. I have, and I, and like, like Kevin, I have a, some new pills that I'm taking recently in the past couple of years that I don't feel good when I'm drinking. And so I've got, you know, a six digit wine collection mm -hmm. that is aging and worth more and more. And I should sell it because I'll never yeah. drink it. Well, I but, have, a, I have a wine, uh, yeah. wine collection. One of uh, one of the things in my wine oh, collection party. is my hand hurts. <laughs> I don't want to go to my. That's hand. one of mine. Um, yeah. Oh, mm. another one was I always hated Miami. Okay, right. so those are this is my that's part of my wine collection. That's right. There we go. Let's get some humor in here. <laughs> Let's get something in here. Right. <laughs> if I was on meds that made me feel bad, I'd have to get some new meds. But I, I drink alcohol. Yeah, I just I <laughs> I, 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 agree, I agree with Alan though. I think pot should be legal everywhere. I don't think that you can have it be legal in one state but not have it legal in the state yeah. next to it. That's right. And not have it right go back and forth. I mean, they just opened it's it up in New Jersey, and if you don't yeah. think I'm going over to New Jersey to buy some pot, you're nuts. You know, right. I want the vapes. I like the vapes. I like to vape. I, you, you know, it's I do too. So. You know, it's depressing, though, when you walk down the street 
and you see everything closed except pot weed stores. Something <laughs> it just, it, I don't know. Just something depresses me about seeing an essential business. Yeah, well, but you can go into a weed store and it, you know, they can let one person in at a time or two people in at a time and keep social yeah, distance and make people wear masks. Yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. just uh, it, it's just sends a weird message oh. about civilization. Oh, you know? uh, we were looking at it one night uh, up the street here, out this window. We have a liquor store, and d d during the whole thing, you know, during the whole COVID crisis. It was open, and there was a line outside waiting to get in. Yeah. Now, how was that? How it, and that was considered an essential business, and I never oh, understood. Heck yeah. I never got a cool man. <laughs> I never oh, understood. Yeah. I never understood that. How was that an essential business? Now, maybe it's my my fact that uh, alcohol eludes me, but I don't see how that comes into you know. Essential yeah, you're business. In the house all day with your wife, you gotta have alcohol. Oh. Or weed. <laughs> or weed. I mean, yeah. Or weed. Or weed. Yeah. So if the, if, the, if, if, if what you to answer your question, <laughs> it, the pot store should be open because the liquor stores are open. Weren't the liquor stores open in California, John? Yeah. 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 They were. They're how about perfect, how about yeah. how about in Texas, Charlie? They were open, weren't they? Oh yeah, they never closed the liquor stores. They never closed the liquor stores. No, so, you know. So they, never closed, they never closed the grocery stores either. You know. No, probably a probably a reason that the pot stores are open in California is uh, a lot of it's medical marijuana, and <laughs> if you close the hospital, it, it, it's kind of the same thing. People need their medical marijuana for their ails. They're open ails them and, again. You know? They're open because they're they can, you know. I mean, the restaurants would be open if they could stay in business. Well, California now is just buy it if you want it, right? It's not just it's not yeah, medical right. marijuana anymore. Eighteen and over, yeah. one out. Yeah. Here, it's still mar me medical marijuana in New York. That's what they're trying to change. And I always well, felt that, got. you know, that I what I have to get cancer before I can smoke pot. Mm -hmm. You know, I often found there was something can you wrong. Pot at Costco. What? Can you buy Costco? Can you oh, buy, buy pot pot at Costco? I don't think you could, just like you can't buy liquor at Costco here. Yeah. But no, We're, Costco. Near us, we can buy. Well, it's different in New York. If oh, you're going to have a liquor store, buy. if you're going to have a liquor store, it has to be separate from the food store. Uh, and so, therefore, yes. every Costco, most Costcos, not the one up here, but the one out in Brooklyn, had right next to it, in the same building, a liquor store. But you had yeah. to leave literally that Costco that wow. other yeah, to go to the other place. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, used to, I was driving to uh, Utah one time, and I used to always stop in, uh, in Nevada to buy booze, you know, because it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I got pulled over in the middle of the desert in Utah, and the cop uh, starts searching my car. And, and he confiscated a case of beer and a fifth of Jameson and wrote me a fucking ticket because you can't bring alcohol into the state of Utah because, you know, they they, it, they, only, they only have government liquor stores. Well, you weren't for a while allowed to take uh, pot out of Colorado, I think. And now yeah. I think you can because there's so many states where you can be going. Like if you're flying to California, it's legal there, so you can take it with you. I, I would bet that the Costco near here in the Bay Area, probably a quarter of the store is liquor. Well, in Wine, California, I've beer, gone to the Costco there. I've, I've gone to the Costco there, and the largest single section in that Costco was in the middle of it, I think. Right. There they had wines and liquors and everything else, you know, Marketing. Moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here you have to have them separate. You can't have them in the same uh, huh. store. In fact, huh. you will find here in New York, if you have a major, like, grocery store from a chain, whatever, Right across the street, somebody will have set up a liquor store, yeah. because you can't buy the liquor in the in the grocery store. You can buy, I don't think you can buy wine, but you can buy cooking wine. Okay, yeah. excuse well, me, yeah, I'm having to blow my nose. Package stores out there, package stores. Uh, go to the package yeah. store. Basically, that's what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I mean, you go in there, you can buy any liquor that you want. It's, there's no no holding back on it, but you just can't buy it in the uh, grocery store. So, huh. you know, 
someday they'll probably change it. All these, you know, a lot of these laws go back to the end of prohibition. Sure. And their way of yeah. trying to deal with uh, with the end of prohibition. Uh, and and so that's why they have these like you have these blue laws where you couldn't you couldn't sell. I don't think you could sell anything before noon on Sundays or three o'clock on Sundays here in New York because they had the blue laws. They did away with them finally. You know? Well, isn't it like uh, Kentucky, they ha- Kentucky, or is it? Or some oh, of those Ohio. Was place Ohio. down south, they have dry counties. Right. You yeah. Go to one county you can't buy, and you go to another county you can. What they That's did the do same. here, yeah, I, th- dry I, counties in Texas. I think what they did here, they? yeah, what I think they did here in New York, which is kind of unusual, uh, is that because of the large Jewish population here, and the fact that the Jewish population would complain, the blue laws didn't apply to Jewish businesses, but they had to close on Saturday. In other words, they had to do the same thing on Saturday that they would do on Sunday. But because they were a Jewish-owned business, they could open early on, on Sundays. But I think all those blue laws are gone. They were, they were still here when I first moved to New York years ago. Excuse me, folks. I'm, my nose is dripping from the dust and everything in this place. Uh, so when I first moved here, the blue laws were still in existence. When I came back, they were gone. They were uh, had been uh, done away with. But you know, uh, yeah. On, on Sundays in Ohio, still there's a, I don't remember the exact time, but I think it's before noon you can't buy alcohol. It's ridiculous. I seem to remember in Texas, Charlie, yeah. there were some law. There are they still in effect? I think you can't buy wine or beer before noon on Sunday. Okay, here's the thing that happened in Texas. When I lived there, you couldn't, and, and I think this was done to keep black people out as well, you couldn't sell liquor by the drink unless it was in a private club. Yeah. And when you yeah. went into this place, if you were white at least, I don't know what happens if you were black, you would walk in and the waitress would hand you a membership card and sign it, and then you could just order by the drink. Uh, yeah, that's, how, that's how it is in Utah. You, really? It's, it's, yeah, it's not that way up. anymore, is it, Charlie? But you do remember the days when it was like uh, that. Yeah, when I first moved to Texas, it was like that. I don't think it's like that anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Dan. Yeah, I'm, I just looked it up for Ohio, and from on Sunday, it's 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Sunday with uh, liquor really? in, in Ohio. It's ridiculous. What I loved is the law in New York, and then I guess we're going to have to go to a theme here, but a law in New York where you, ha- you, you have to close down all bars at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? 2 o'clock in California. No, but yeah, 4 o'clock, two four o'clock in New right. York State, and then you can open back up at 7. <laughs> never, never yeah, made yeah, any right. any sense to me at all. So the drinking four hours to sober up. Yeah. Excuse me, I'll take it to go and go sit out in the car for three <laughs> hours and drink and then go back into the bar. I think that's the, the way it was. I don't know if it still is that way any longer. Anyway, thank you all for joining me tonight. It's been a nice night tonight. I've enjoyed yes. it. Had a good time. Sorry for all my allergies and uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, pointing they're doing with all the dust and <laughs> Alan, thank you, thank you to uh, uh, Dan. You've been very good tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, Charlie, you are always terrific. Jeffrey, you just talk way too much. Okay. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. John Larkin, thank you, and Kevin. Always yeah. a pleasure to have Kevin here. He uh, he adds a nice nice touch to the panel. Anyway. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel, and that's it for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with a thing called The uh, Intersection. It will go on right after us, and they'll be using Skype as their method of communication with Gabinet Live being the address you should use. In the meantime... I'll see you again tomorrow night for the final show of the week. It's Friday, and uh, we'll see you then. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there, wear a mask, and get vaccinated if you can. <laughs>